Which company has best AI model on June 30th? This is Polymarket. It's a betting website and it shows you what the markets think or who the markets think is going to have the best AI model by the end of June. As you can see, OpenAI is a strong favorite here with Google following fairly close behind. Now, it's interesting that currently, according to this metric, which I'll show you, Google is the leading model and Google has about above an 80% chance of being the best model by the end of February. So it's expected here, according to markets, that OpenAI is going to bring out something better before the end of June. Now, my view here when I look through the companies is that things are a little bit overconfident. In my mind, there are probably five, maybe six companies that all have a roughly equal chance of having the best model at a given point in the future. I think research is very hard to predict. People come up with new orthogonal ideas that are just hard to foresee. So particularly, I see Meta and also Anthropic as being too low here. And I had a little bet just for fun myself to see if I'm right on this as a prediction. Now, this week, Google has released a new suite of models. Just to recap where things stand, Google's latest series prior to this was the 1.5 series, and they offered two models. They offered Gemini Flash 1.5 and also Gemini Pro. Gemini Pro was a very strong model, still available, and still the strongest, I think, model perhaps in some ways from Google. Performs similarly to GPT-40, probably stronger, but allows for a context length of up to 2 million tokens, which is far beyond any of the other models. Anthropic do allow for 500,000, but only if you pay extra in some kind of a business plan. Public uh, API models are generally limited to 200,000, and that's only recently been reached by OpenAI with their O3 MIDI model. So the history is Google has this 1.5 billion budget model and the 1.5 billion high quality model. But now they're moving on to their series 2.0 and they've released the flash model, which is the more budget of the two models, but performs similarly, not quite as good, but close to Gemini 1.5 Pro. Google also have a thinking model, which is not listed here, but is available to try out in AI Studio. You can try out Gemini flash thinking, and this is their way to compete with the DeepSeek model. Now, the thing you have to remember with Google compared to OpenAI or Anthropic is that Google have their own GPUs or TPUs, tensor processing units. They've been developing these for many years and they can make them at a lot cheaper price per token of throughput than any of the other providers can. OpenAI, for example, Meta, Anthropic, they rely largely on NVIDIA and NVIDIA's GPUs. So ultimately, Google is the one player that is able to undercut on pricing, not just due to better architecture because uh, of things that DeepSeek have done, but because they have these cheaper G TPUs. So let's take a look at where the pricing stands. And I'm going to go through reasoning models, high quality models, and then budget models. Today, there are two reasoning models, and I'm just including two that are in production. There's DeepSeek with their R1 model, and there's OpenAI with their O3 mini model. Now, OpenAI will release the O3 model probably within one to two months, and that will be expected to perform more powerfully than the O3 mini model, but presumably will be more expensive. What you're seeing here on the chart is the price per million input tokens in dark blue, and then per million output tokens in lighter blue. This is important, the output price for thinking models, because they generate very long streams of thoughts, whereas generally models will provide relatively short answers, and so most of your cost is focused on the input tokens. Now, the difference between DeepSeek and OpenAI here in price somewhat reflects a China premium. It's the price that you pay to have your data processed in Europe or in the US relative to having it processed in China. Now, that's not completely fair because O3 Mini performs better than R1 on many benchmarks. It performs better on ARC, which is a difficult problem for AI, but easier for humans. It performs better on maths problems too. So you can see there are two reasons for the premium. Some is performance-based, although R1 has really caught up. And the second one is that China premium. Now, moving on to high quality models. These are not thinking models. They'll provide more concise answers and they'll be quicker to respond. We have the classic GPT-40, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and Gemini Pro 1.5. Notice how Gemini Pro 1.5 is priced significantly lower, even though it can handle much longer context than these other two models here. And this is the previous model. Google is going to release Gemini Pro 2.0. In fact, you can test out 2.0 in Google Studio just by going to Gemini 2 Pro Experimental. Now, it's free to use via API, but it's rate limited, and there is no pricing available as of yet. 
So it remains to be seen where Google will come in with this model, but most likely it will outperform GPT-40 and it will outperform Claude Sonnet on many benchmarks. I'll say something more about that in a second, but probably it doesn't have to come in at much higher of a price because Google has these TPUs and can un undercut the competition in that way. Now, something special about Claude is that they have managed to remain the most popular model for coding despite the emergence of these reasoning models. If you read through the recommendations of Cursor, one of the uh, most used IDEs or solutions for coding, they will recommend using Claude Sonnet, even though the model at this point is about 10 months old, although I'm sure it's had some updates. What's really good about Sonnet is they have trained it to be very good in multi-turn conversation and also in following instructions. They've really put effort into that, whereas other companies like OpenAI and DeepSeek have put effort into reasoning. And this seems to have stood the test of time probably better than any other model when it comes to these coding applications. And I'd say it's not just coding that Sonnet is good at, but it's notable how it's been able to stand out even when it doesn't maybe perform the best in every single benchmark. Now, the last graph to show is the budget models pricing. Typically, these are versions of the good models, but they are smaller versions. In fact, they are often distilled or derived from the large models by taking a large model and then training the smaller model on the outputs of the large or what you can call a teacher model. And the budget models here, we have GPT-40 Mini, which has been around now for quite a long time. Claude 3 Haiku priced very highly. I'm surprised how highly this is uh, priced, particularly now that O3 Mini allows for an input of 200,000 tokens like uh, Claude 3.5 Haiku. So I think this price point for Haiku is probably a bit unsustainable. And in a lot of cases, anyway, developers, or me at least, I'm just using the Claude Sonnet because I find that that boost in performance is important and I'm willing to pay a bit more for it. Now, Gemini Flash 2.0, which is actually very close in performance to Gemini Pro 1.5. It's probably comparable to GPT-40 in a lot of ways, but it's at a really low price of just 10 cents. And I've even included DeepSeek Chat in this graph here because although DeepSeek Chat is really a high quality model that performs with these, it's able to achieve a budget price because of the architectural uh, improvements that have been made by DeepSeek. Of course, there is the China discount here, whereby your data will have to go to a Chinese data center. And in fact, if you want to send it to a Western company that is running DeepSeek, which is possible, Fireworks or Together AI, they will actually charge much more. They will charge up to around 90 cents uh, for running this same model that is being offered by DeepSeek for just 14 cents. Now, here's the competitive problem for OpenAI and for Google. If I ask a question of a reasoning model like O3 Mini, I'll just ask for the sum of the third to the fifth Fibonacci numbers. Not a particularly difficult question. The model is going to provide some reasoning and then it's going to provide its final answer. But you'll see that OpenAI does not show the detailed reasoning. It does not show the tokens that are being generated here, even though they're being paid for in an API call. And these tokens are useful to see. It's kind of satisfying to see the stream of thought going through the LLM, but it's useful because you figure out what it's thinking about wrongly, and then you might need to rephrase your question. And Google is adopting somewhat of a similar approach. Let's try out this uh, thinking model here in AI Studio. It is just in development, but let me run the same question. And yeah, you can see it's thinking here and it does share some of the thoughts, but this is not the raw stream of thought that's coming from the model. It's some kind of a summarized version. And this means it's not as satisfying from a user experience perspective. And there are other companies providing a better user experience. So this is very much going to push companies like OpenAI to adopt an open stream of thought like DeepSeek, whose model ironically right now uh, does not seem to be running because it gets a bit overloaded. The reason this is actually difficult is because there's a paper out now, and I think it's from Stanford. Let me just check here. Uh, Stanford, also Seattle, and the Allen Institute for AI and Contextual AI. But what this paper shows um, is that if you have just 1,000 trains of thought, so if you have 1,000 versions of the detailed train of thought, which uh, the detailed version of this, you are able to distill a model. You are able to train a model, a base model, to perform very similarly to some of the top models out there today. And this paper did what I'm showing you on uh, thinking. So it took this thinking model here. It took, I presume, the limited uh, train of thought that was provided. And um, correct me if I'm wrong on whether this is limited, by the way. To me, this looks like it's been sanitized somewhat, but I could be wrong on that. 
but it takes the full uh, chain of thought from Google thinking, uses that to train a 32 billion parameter model, which uh, starts off as Quen 2.5, which is a strong instruct model to start. And let me just show you the results here comparing with OpenAI and Anthropic. So here, if we look, for example, at this Math 500 benchmark, you can see that O1 is scoring uh, just under 95%. Uh, flash thinking, there's no metric because there's no API. I guess I'm not entirely clear. I guess the API is maybe only just available. Quen, without the training with these traces, scores 84. But then when it is trained with the traces, just 1,000, it's able to get up to 93. So it's able to get to a level that's fairly close to the O1 model itself and actually is fairly close to the OR1 models from DeepSeek as well. So this is, poses a real strategic issue for OpenAI and for Google and also Anthropic when they presumably launch a thinking model, because clearly it's better to be able to see these chains of thought and the consumer is going to ask for that, business is going to ask for that. And yet there's this competitive difficulty that in displaying those chains of thought, it really does allow other companies to then distill models off of that. Now, granted, it's not allowed according to the terms of service, but at the same time, it can be very difficult to detect exactly what data has been used to train models. Naturally, many of these chains of thought are going to end up on the open web. That's if they're disclosed or revealed at all in the first place. And so that means they're going to become intermingled, making it more difficult to establish exactly who is training from what.